I am Bay, and this is Bay. Say hi, Bay. Hi, Bay. So today we were talking about book two in the Vampire Academy uh, series, which is yes. Frostbite. Yes. Right? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I still don't. <laughs> she got shy. I did Shirts on you. <laughs> Sorry. I uh, I maybe accidentally didn't finish it. Um, but where'd you get up to? I got up to, I think, I got up to chapter seventeen. What happens in chapter seventeen? Crap. Just press play for a second. See what's happening. Did you follow me from the party? Yes. I didn't even know you were there. His dark clothes indicated he must have been on guardian duty at the party. Okay. Awesome. Okay, I know. Oh, uh, you're not even like at the beginning of the best part, like the climax part. <laughs> yeah, I know. Poor it's babe. okay. You know what happens in this book, though, in general, right? Like, you've read this before, so it's not like it's like you're going to be I, like, what? He dies? Oh, yeah. No, I know that. Um, <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, I remember like the big beats of it, generically. Okay. It's been a very long time, but like when you go, yeah, he, by the way, this is book club with Bay, not spoiler free book review with Bay. So spoilers, Dimitri dies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. He isn't in this book. No. No, no, it's Mason. That's this next book. book, isn't it? Yeah. Who this one's Mason. Mason. Oh, right. He gets a oh, next one. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, this is the one where they're like kidnapped and like held in a basement. And then, like, during the escape, the Strigoi are like, aha, uh -huh, no. And she's like, bitch, please. And then Mason's like, no. And it's just, and he honestly, it's just a, it's an effective way to solve a love triangle. <laughs> yeah. Although so Rosa almost solved it herself anyway she was yeah. on her way to do that and see okay let's just jump straight into this okay i have so like, many like, things to say about like the the guy situation <clears throat> like i made a note about it hi soul of the dragon good morning how are hi. you um yeah like, but like like we was saying in the like with the last book one of the things that makes rose likable is she's introspective oh yeah she totally like, is like in this one, right? Yeah, she's put herself in a love triangle, and it, and in in your average way, it's like you know, this was nice. It was, it's not as thrilling as that other guy. I should end it, but yeah. I won't. But her Whereas love she's triangle like, makes so much sense. Yeah, and then when she realizes, like you know, she's making out with Mason, but it clicks, like it clicks onto her that she's uh, pretending she's with Dimitri, and she's like, well, let's just, just breaks please, I got some shit to figure out. And then she figures a shit out and she's like, okay, I yeah. gotta go end this shit. Like, she's yeah, like, and then, this ain't right, let's fix for it. For sure. <laughs> and then, but also like, the fact that she's even in a situation in the first place makes so much sense because the way that it's set up is like perfect. Hmm. Because if you, like, if you were in a situation, most of us would do the exact same thing, right? Like there's this person- Yeah, she's that, trying to move on and she can't. Yeah, there's like this person that you absolutely can't have that's probably going to leave you and like go be with somebody else. And you're like, I'm 17 or whatever. She thinks she's still 17 in this book, right? Yeah, she's 17. Yeah. She's like, I'm 17. This guy's my age. We have a lot in common. Like, okay, I can do this, you know? And you're like, yeah, like I buy it. And it, it, so yeah. it's not as though she's like just being a slut and being a dick. Like she's genuinely trying and it's not like she doesn't like Mason or doesn't respect him. She's no, she adores Mason. She's just in love with Dimitri. Right. So it's, so it makes sense, you know, and you're yeah, not she wants to love like, Mason. wow, you idiot. Yeah. And that's Why one thing I like about this? this as well. It's not the love triangle of like, you know, I'm so in love with these two different guys and I just need to figure out which one I just can't live without. Yeah. Like, she's like, no, I want to love you, but I can't. Well, and 
in reality, um, oh dear. at least. I'll be back in a sec. You're good. I have a spiel anyway. Okay. So I got this for a second. Um, Cause like also when you're reading this, at least for me, part of me, as much as obviously like you ship Rose and Dimitri because you're obligated to, you also kind of just ship like the situation with her and Mason, because at least for Rose in the technical sense, it's a lot healthier and it's a lot less stressful for her. So it also makes sense why she would even pursue it in the first place. And just comparing and contrasting that to like, for example, House of Night, <laughs> where you have and you know, the older mentor figure, and then you have like the younger guy's situation or whatever. Zoe's just she's just a piece of crap. Like there's no complex reason behind anything that she does. It's just like these guys are hot. I'm gonna do them. And it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. There's no character development. Whereas with like Rose, there is character development. The reason why she tries to move on is very mature. It's something that most people, I mean, well, it's not, I'm not going to say something that most people would do, but it's something that you can absolutely see yourself doing, or it's something that you can also see yourself being torn about, which is why, which is why it's compelling. It's why she's fun. Um, and then also with like every, she has a lot of like irrational things in this book, but you're also not like mad at her for it either. Yeah. And, and, and we start to work out why in this book those irrational things are happening. And she's even like, cause she also goes, like, she's also goes, look, I know I can be a bitch batshit crazy sometimes, but this is batshit crazy even for me. What the fuck? Yeah, like, exactly. She's aware. And, there's also just like a lot of stress happening for her, right? Because secretly being in love with your teacher, one is stressful. Two, she's just to touch on the romance bit of that. But two, as we talked about last time, because of her relationship with Lissa, she bears the brunt of so much of that. And then also, she's just going through the teenage angst of losing her best friend to a boyfriend. And yeah. also, her jealousy doesn't feel as misplaced as it would in a normal best friend relationship, simply because Lissa relies so much on her. Yep. But when plus the bond. Yeah, plus the bond. But then like when Rose needs Lissa or needs someone to talk to, she's just in boyfriend mode. So you understand yeah. the jealousy a little bit more. Yeah, and part of it as well is and Rose, like Lissa ends up, does in the next book, call her out on this. But Rose also just puts Lissa's needs, like just even on a friendship level, she puts Lissa's needs before her own or Lissa's mm -hmm. wants before her needs. Yeah. And Lissa, like Lissa, I'm, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this is part of the conversation. She's like, that's not fair. Yeah. You're going through shit. I'm your best friend. You should tell me. I'm here for you. And Rose is like, but it's my job to look after you. And she's like, bitch, I'm your best friend. <laughs> yeah. She's like, why wouldn't you tell me? Yeah. Like it's not on? like, yeah. Like the, their, the emotion, like the one sidedness of the emotional support isn't Lissa's fault. She's not a selfish friend. Right. Rose just doesn't let her know. And because Rose can sense that Lissa wants to tell her something or, you know, is excited about something before Rose can even bring herself to bring something up. Like, it's not like even like, you know, she, like she walks in there looking sad and Lissa just ignores it. Rose pushes it to the back of her head before Lissa even gets a chance to notice something. Soft. Yeah. So Lissa just doesn't even know. And then you know, so because what happens is, like you just said, because Rose is like, oh, okay, I'm not going to interrupt this. She doesn't want to interrupt, like, Lissa's flow. So she never yeah. does. And so then she just winds up isolating herself, which is also, if you're not, like, a selfish, terrible person, which is also completely relatable. Because, you know, if you knew every time that your friend was in, like, a great mood and wanted to tell you something, you know, you could see yourself possibly never telling them anything because you'd be like, well, I don't maybe want to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, like Rose is, 
I mean, yes, it's Rose's job to care, like to protect Lissa, but again, she takes it too far. She, I guess that would be like the hard part of being best friends with someone who you have been training your whole, whole life to protect as well. Mm -hmm. Like that will translate into the friendship. Yeah, and there's also like the ideology too. Yeah, so she doesn't like she she doesn't want to like when Liz is sad she doesn't want to add to it when Liz is happy she doesn't want to ruin the mood. You know if if they're just if Liz is neutral she doesn't again she doesn't want to upset anything. She's like oh well you know like I don't want to drive her more crazy. So yeah, I and I also think it's a good allegory for any time or a good allegory metaphor however you would have put it, um, just like a good parallel for. Like if you want to take lessons, I guess, away from the book. Yeah. Um, for any time that like you have a friend that's going through something, and mm -hmm. if like you ever and like when people back off or like you're like I'm not going to tell this person this because like oh well they're already going through stuff, so like I don't want to add to it. And it's like well mm -hmm. everybody's always going to be going through some shit. So yeah, some you know sometimes you just have to share the pain. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, because also, like, you know, it, it's sort of like if you're friends, you just have to expect that everybody can be a fucking adult and mm. just. Yeah, um, Rose does not give Lissa the credit she deserves a lot. She ends up doing it a lot more later in the series. Which is good. But, it's character development. I fucking yeah. love it. And but the, Yeah, but, yeah, the first three books, not so much. No, and but it's okay because... Because, like we said, the way it's set up, it makes sense. And also, she has the emotional maturity of a 17-year-old who's doing her best to fit into, like, this guardian role. Even though she's not a guardian yet, so she, te she technically doesn't have to, but they already went on the run, so she feels like she has to. Like, there's just a lot yeah. of complicated stuff. And like you said, she's – Rochelle – Mead is very good at writing, comp like you said, complicated emotions in a very simple way, mm. um, in a very YA friendly way. And it just really, really works. Like also something that I loved in this book was her relationship with her mom. Yes, I was about to bring up the mom relationship. I, I fucking love it. It is so well written. It's so good. Mm. And the way that her mom acts is very realistic and very true to the ideology and yeah but you know. then also like there's all those layers like where even if rose doesn't necessarily she picks up on the signals but not always mm -hmm. what the signals mean of like her mom trying to like wedge that door open a crack and rose is just like nope let's just keep that shut please but why haven't you opened the door mom right because she's acting like a teenager and it's and it's good yeah, that, and like, the author is letting her act like a teenager who needs to grow up because... Yeah, and know. she does grow up a lot in this, like, by the end of this book, she's, like... Because mm -hmm. she she goes through some shit, and that also actually helps their, her relationship with her mother actually start to yeah become a relationship, which is nice. Yeah, and because you're reading it in first person, and this is why I like reading books in first person... Um, and third person has its uses too, but in a lot of cases, I prefer first person. But it just, it, it, this book would be really annoying in third person probably because you wouldn't get that introspection. Um, yeah, I mean, it also depends on the style of third person. Like, yeah. Harry Potter third person is effectively first person from a third per person perspective. Yeah. But then yeah. there's just straight up third person and it's like i don't i don't know whose thoughts i'm in right now but that's cool <laughs> yeah um and the thing is like when she's acting like a teenager it's so easy not to judge her for it because you know she's being introspective and you know she's going to grow from it and i think it's just such a it's such little it's such like small tweaks Mm -hmm. But it makes such a world of difference um, because it's one of those things, like any kind of plot grievances, like if you notice, like in these books and like in the Mercy Thompson books, we don't really get into like 
sometimes we do, but like we don't really get into like tiny little plot grievances and stuff like that. Or like we don't really get into like picking apart the plot or like the timeline or whatever. Um, mostly because the timeline makes sense. But we don't, I don't even think it occurs to us to get into that um, mm. other than just out of like pure interest. And that's because yeah. the books are well written. And usually when people are nitpicking something, it's because the book is bad in the first place. Yeah. Not because and, like the nitpicky stuff actually matters that much. Yeah. And honest. Oh, fuck. I just, uh, <laughs> one of like this series is like for a YA, it is fantastic. It really is. Cause also like the consequences they ripple out across books. Like, in, I'm pretty sure Mason's death gets mentioned in the last book of Bloodlines, or or at least the some of the effects that it has on Eddie gets mentioned still, like. In and as the last... it should, that's his best friend. It's like, oh, good, mm -hmm. the author remembered. Yeah, like like because Eddie is a much, like Eddie's still a um, a key character, like he hasn't really been a key character yet until the end of like you know, the end situation in this book. And he is a key character in Vampire Academy, like from this point on, but he's a main character in yeah. Bloodlines. And the like, again, because we haven't seen too much of him yet, like, but he's very young, very naive, very gung-ho. And from this point on, he is serious, focused, dedicated, you know. He's no longer like a naive boy with, delusions of grandeur like he's just straight up like no i have a duty how can i do my duty best yeah and, and it I, ripple and, and again it, it ripples again all the way to the end of the bloodline series so that's 10 books later this like what happens in this book is still affecting him 10 books later yeah because that's how best friend death works yeah but not in a way it's like, oh my god, Eddie, he's dead, get over it. Like it's not it's not constantly droning on about it. Like and even when Rose is especially in the next book, Rose is still heavily hung up on Mason's death. Um, it's not in a oh my god, fucking <laughs> kill me type of way. It's like, I feel you. <laughs> yeah. You know? And the other thing too is that when it comes to writing, especially a supporting cast, it is so important that you keep up with the cast's relationships with each other. Yeah. Because, like, you should be treating your cast like your supporting cast, like their main characters, and how much development you're giving them. Because otherwise, it's just flat and dull. Like, when I think about House of Night, for example, like, I don't think the supporting cast, I don't think their relationships to each other ever change or evolve, really, other than Shawnee and Aaron get into one fight. Yeah, they untwin. Yeah. And I'm like, they untwin. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, and, like, that's the thing, like, like if we want to bring up the House of Night comparisons, like, yeah, like like I was saying, like Mason Mason's death changes the characters from the like all all of the characters that were close to Mason are different from this point on. Mm -hmm. Um, House of Night Jack dies. Nobody and cares, they're, and they're sad because they're saying they're sad, and that's about it. And, and Damien's really like Damien is like you know the most devastated person alive until in two books he sees the cute news guy. And he's like, hey, want to be my boyfriend? And he's like, yes. And it's like, Damien, it's been two weeks since your boyfriend died. It's a bit soon. Yeah. <laughs> and if they were timelined out correctly, you know, what would happen, especially if your boyfriend died as a teenager, is you would probably be pretty apprehensive about getting a new one. You know, hmm. and it would actually be really interesting. There's so many things in House of Night that would be so interesting. And it's like the contrast between house of night in this and like i said it's just so many tweaks and it's so many things that can be fixed yeah throughout house of night in a single sentence yeah and i think that's what's so frustrating about it is is like a lot of these fixes don't take that much but no. it just takes some detail and some actual care but and they don't have none 
yeah, but they just don't care. No. Oh, and guess what annoying. as well? Speaking of House of Night. Mm -hmm. Um the same chick that narrate that's been like the the rest of the House of Night narrator books. Yeah. She does the new ones too, apparently. Yay. I mean, so on the plus side, we don't have to get used to yet another voice. That's true. Um, She's not that bad. Yeah. Either. Um okay, let's go back to Vampire Academy though. Yeah. That's it on that note. On the narrator note, um, so last book we had one narrator. This book we had another one. Um, and the next book will have this narrator as well. Do you see what I mean about how she does Demetri's voice, though? Yeah, and it I was, was like, oh, Rosa. Oh, Rosa. <laughs> and, like, I was like, okay. Um, but it was fine. It's, it's, yeah. Like, I think the most jarring part, when she did Demetri's voice was like, especially like when they were driving to the house and he's, and it's like, he literally was like, Oh Rosa, but it's just like, that is the wrong voice for that sentiment. <laughs> yeah, it was. And I was like, what? and yeah, the, the, um, the narrator after, um, um, eh, cause this, one's like whatever she is but then one that does from book four to the end of bloodlines um is emily schaefer and she manages to find a decent balance between you know a russian accent that doesn't sound too retarded and normal she finds yeah. a she finds a good balance that's good because like honestly i feel bad that you have to narrate that anybody has to narrate in that accent. Like other than Lorelai King, because bless her. Um, she, she can do the accents. Yeah, no, she just, she's, she always, she's always popping off the accents and I'm just like, none of, and it's never, and it's there, there are times where I think it's like once, I don't even remember which one it was, but I was like, but it was once. And <laughs> So, like, honestly, she's just always popping off, and you're just like, I'll take it. Um, but it's yeah. hard to find a narrator that can do it. So Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, especially when you start getting into southern accents. I don't know why that is, but my God. Mm -hmm. um, what book was it? I, I don't... Every so often, like, I mean, it's it's okay if it's just, like, a throwaway line or something. Like, I, actually, it was The Last House of Night book. Um, I can't remember if it was, I think Stark did it to Zoe, but it was just, like, a throwaway, like, just, a, a, like, a half-sentence long, like, Southern Bell accent, but he was doing it in a teasing way. And mm -hmm. it's just, like, I can live with that because it's not a yeah. character accent. It's a character putting it on so even if it is bad we can just say that's a character fault <laughs> but because he, he yeah. was also supposed to be bad so it's like i can live with yeah. that one <laughs> yeah i mean you know yeah, it's that, that's one thing for house you're like <laughs> but you're like uh, uh, uh all right fine um but it's like and a lot of books are set in parts of the country where like everybody should have a little bit of a twang but nobody does <laughs> just because it's like you you know, no. I, I appreciate when the narrator doesn't do the twang if it's not natural, even if everyone's supposed to have it. I can yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Well I, well, I say that as somebody who did that and then picked a narrator who was Canadian um, because she was really good. <laughs> does she so. Does she say a boat? <laughs> she says sorry. <laughs> oh, actually, speaking of Canadian accents, um, I was watching, I, like, I've... I binge watched heart like the twelve seasons of Heartland. Yeah, and and I I didn't mean it, but like I'd say to the kids, I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's Mara. <laughs> I mean, at least I was saying to you last night. Now I act, now I naturally say X, Y, and Z. So like, it, yeah, which is weird do? because we don't normally like we still don't actually really say Z that much unless it's in an X, Y, Z format <laughs> yeah but you do say that and i picked I that up 
And what's really an- what really annoys me though is my daughter when she sings the alphabet says Z. No, oh. she says Z. her her preschool has taught her, you know, Q R S T U V W X Y N Z, and I'm like, I can't correct her because it'll just confuse her. When you sing the alphabet, I don't care what country you're in and yeah, how you y pronounce and it. Z. Always Z. It rhymes, okay? Yeah, yeah. Just, Y and Z. Like, and it, then it goes. Now I know my ABCs. Yeah, Next like sing with there, me. Yeah, like Z just doesn't fit the song. But we can. <laughs> but like, it's okay, child. Tiny Morris yeah. Bond, we will fix you later. <laughs> yeah, like on, honestly, yeah, our Z to Z ratio is about 50 50 in this country. Like, not not amongst people, just amongst how you as an individual will pronounce it. Yeah. It's about 50 50, depending on context. Yeah, because like that's what's happened to me too. And then also, like, servo is a thing for me. And, um, and part, it, part. It, well, servo is just like the. Uh, we we just make talking more convenient, okay? You do, you, and yeah, really, I think that's why it's so easy to pick up. Like, okay, like for we'll say McDonald's, okay, like Macca's. You can say M- McDonald's, or apparently the um, American nickname for it is Mickey D's, and it's like that's so long. It's that's longer the same. than McDonald's. Yes, or you could just go, let's go to Macca's. Done. Yeah, I say Macca's now too, and it's um it's very confusing to everybody, but it's not confusing to me, and I forget. Also, because I don't have a child, um, but you have children, all of my baby stuff vocabulary yeah. is Australian. Yeah. Um, I have to. Oh, okay. I, 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 I yelled at a friend of mine the other day because said friend is currently up the duffs and she kept calling. A cot, a crib, and I'm like, you're not American. I just, I just want you to know by the time I got back here, I actually could not remember the like American name for it. I was like, what is it? And I was like, oh, it's a crib. It took me like three days. I was like, that's what it is. Because for you, for you guys, a cot is like a rollaway bed, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, a rollaway bed. I like that. Because you pick it up and you roll it away. <laughs> and I will say this, like, I, I do use, uh, like, not a drama, like, that phrase. Yeah. It confuses everybody. But, it, but okay, the request you have just made, you have just made of me is not a drama. Yeah. So I am happy to do it. It yeah. will cause zero dramas. <laughs> yeah, no dramas, not a drama. Oh, poor Maggie. Hi, Maggie. It's okay. Uh, like... <laughs> And and everybody's like, what? And I'm like, what? no problem then. Like, cause yeah. if you say not a problem or no problem, like everyone's not confused. But if you say drama instead of problem, I'm gonna keep doing so- it until it social- catches on. Yeah. And in a social context, drama and problem are often interchangeable, so it yeah. shouldn't be confusing. I know. Okay, we are so off topic. We haven't even started to talk about the plot. We nope. haven't. <laughs> okay, shall we? Yes. So we pick up what I think like a m- couple, a month or two after the last book. Mm-hmm. And Rose has to go and do her qualifier because her and Lissa were on vacation, as the, as they're referring to it. In this yeah. Book. Obviously, they they don't think of it as a vacation. They use it ironically, but they were on vacation when the rest of her class had their qualifiers. Also, I appreciate the like she just does the thing where she's like, "In case you want it, here's a recap." Yes, I'm, have- and I'm sorry, and I'm sorry that was my fault. When because I like because I had it all as just one big bulk MP3, and I chapterized it. Yeah. And- I didn't take note of the fact that there was the prologue, which was the, here's everything you missed last book. Well, you know what? It's fine because um, I actually didn't mind that kind. I don't mind those kinds of recaps because um, Addie and I have been playing around with like what to do with Blackwoods because the books are about to get so long. And um, 
Mark Lawrence does it too, where he just has like a preface where he's like, uh, for those of you who've waited a year, here is this. Uh, also, because the books are so fucking long, here's all the important shit. Uh, if you don't need it, goodbye. Just and, go to chapter one. Yeah, we're good. go to chapter one. But just so that I don't have to toss it in there, awkwardly like an idiot, here it all is. All the information, bullet by bullet, goodbye. Like, and I'm like, this is, it, it's awesome. I love it. I love it yeah. being done that way. And I think it should always be done that way. Uh, you know, like for the Rosalie books, it's not done that way because they're short enough. You, you read the damn books. But for the longer <laughs> books, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, I do think it's a good, it is a, it is a good storytelling method. Cause again, it's also like, it's, it's obviously done in character. It's not like the author saying, no, to read off. Here's everything missed. Like, no, like in this one, it, like it's from Rosalie's perspective. She's like, hi, I'm Rose Hathaway. And I am a dampy. What's a dampy, you ask? Well, it is this. Oh, and there's Maroi and Strigoi. Here's what they are, you know? And yeah. here's some key characters that, you know, are very near and dear to my heart. And let's be honest, the Mercy Thompson books would save a lot of time if it would just be like, Adam is the alpha of the Columbia band. <laughs> like, yeah. And Oh, great. You know, now I have if, another Bubba crying. Give me a second. Um, I'm sorry. It would save a lot of time if, uh, if she just did it. And... Um, you know, a longer series like that, I think it does make sense because especially with the Mercy books, because she's actually a good author, things do change between books. And so um I think it would depend on the series, but in Blackwoods, it doesn't happen in the Blades of Redwater because the first book's a novella. And um if you didn't read the novella, we can't help you. But in uh the in this in the third book the one after the Blades of Redwater. Yeah, that's that's going to happen because the Blades of Redwater is long and a lot of things happen and you do things from different perspectives and we're in different places. And so it's like, we're just going to be nice and just recap for you. Yeah. <laughs> because this is about to be a long book. This is going to be about 200,000 words. So just throwing you a bone. <laughs> Here's what happened last time. Um, yeah. Anyway. And, yeah, and it's nice. It's like, it's like the beginning of a TV show where it's like previously, you know, previously on, on in the Star Vampire show Academy. Academy. Yeah, like, <laughs> and and it, so it's especially like Netflix where you can just go skip recap. Yeah, it's great if you want to. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So so she's off to do a qualifier, but um, because it's like you know we need to do it as special circumstances that her and Dimitri are going out to this guy guy's house effectively and you know they have they go for a drive Rosie's like super duper excited she gets to be in a car with Dimitri and he's just like calm your tits like we're not we're not we're not doing the fuck in the car it's okay um they get there and everyone's dead yep and they're like, what the fuck? Um, and <clears throat> they they get signs of A, it was an unusually large group of Strigoi working together, and B, that they had human help. So, and, oh, and there were royals that did it. And apparently the guy that they were going to see, he's also dead, but he was like original Dimitri. Like Dimitri just gets described as a god, and this guy is like older Dimitri effectively. Yep. Um, so everyone's super duper freaked out. It's almost Christmas. Um, they go back. Everyone's like, you know, again, freaking out because it, it's like a once in a lifetime style attack, but apparently not because it's going to happen again. Um, so they decide to go to a, um, ski lodge, a Maroi ski lodge. So then that way all of the students and their families and whatever other more I want to go can all have a safe and happy vacation together. Yep. Um, before they do that, though, before, like before they actually go, because they're going the day after Christmas, um, Dimitri and Rose, oh, Rose's mother, R Rose is in class and Rose's mother is there. <laughs> And I think 
Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, and um, so some of the guardians, because there's already some visiting Moroi at the school, so mm -hmm. some of the visiting um, guardians are telling, like, their Strigoi stories, I guess. Yep. To the DMP classes, and Rose's mother gets up and she starts, she does her story, and Rose decides to mouth off at her. Yeah. Cause it's, and it's fun too, not fun, but it's, it's well done too, because she's got like this sort of hero worship thing going on. And she's very bitter that she has this sort of hero worship thing going on. Like this reluctant yeah. hero worship thing happening for her mom. Cause she's like, Oh, it's cool. Fuck her. Yeah. And you can tell as well. Cause like her mom was just saying it all like, like again, with a lot of the, phrases she was saying if she had a different tone it would have been like how awesome am I I did this whereas her mom's just like yeah so I did a thing and then another thing you know like it was it wasn't bragging Rosie's like bitch can you please at least try and brag so yeah. I can be mad so like to justify my being mad at mm -hmm. you <laughs> yeah yeah um it's no, very I, well done I really like how they wrote how she wrote you know Rose's very conflicting emotions because then also her and her mother end up like you know she ends up calling her mom out and she's like you know sounds like you you guys fucked up which is how you got into the situation in the first place type thing <laughs> sorry type thing and she ends up getting sent out and her mom comes out to talk to her and Rose like her mom just points out just how hypocritical Rose's thoughts towards her are like because again Rose is like you're not, I'm surprised you even remember that I exist. And her mom's like, well, what did you want me to do? Like, I'm a guardian. I can't, I couldn't not guardian. Like, are you going to not guardian if you have kids? And Rose is like, obviously not. And she's like, exactly. So what's your problem? Right. And Rose is like, well. Fuck I, you. <laughs> she's like, are you going to be a blood whore? And Rose is like, don't call them that. But I'm not going to be one because they're dirty. <laughs> I don't. Damn it, I don't know. Does like, not compute. Yeah, like she's doing her best and you're just like, yeah, it's it's rough when you have opinions, but also the culture, but then also you and then yeah, I know, I feel yeah. Mm, but but I like that but I like that they well. go for it. I mm, like that she Yeah. Yeah, and it's like it's very human to have incredibly contradictory um emotions. Yeah. Which. Yeah, for sure. And again, it's written in a way where you're not just like, oh my God, make up your mind. You're like, no, I feel you. Fuck your mom, but also leave your mom alone. She yeah. did the best she could. Yeah, because the culture is written in a way that works. And it's also written consistently. This is also the thing with like writing consistent cultures and writing characters that interact with this culture in a consistent way. Um, yeah. Which makes it so that when Rose is being conflicted about it, you're not just sitting here like. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it works. <clears throat> uh, and um, there's also, I think then Rose goes to try and talk to Lissa about it all. Mm -hmm. and but then Liz is distracted so she doesn't and Liz is getting all pretty and she's like okay I've got to go meet Christian bye and Rose is like okay bye how dare you leave when I have shit to tell you that I'm too chicken to tell you yeah but you also still get it yeah but it's still just like but you do have to tell her but you get it yeah because I think at um, this point too because of how fragile Lissa was, you also understand Rose's reluctance. It's just set up in a way that works. Yeah, and you know? and I guess, and again, because because it this is written from Rose's perspective, like I guess again in the first three books, like we do, out like the reader's opinion of Lissa does change, like veer from Rose's. Um, before Rose's opinion of Lissa's of Lissa changes. Yeah. But it's we're still relatively consistent. Like, you know, first time I was reading this, I was like, yeah, no, like protect that bitch. She's she's fuck she's a she's a wreck. She's gonna have a breakdown if if you do something type thing. Yeah, because you don't um, know till later. 
Yeah, and then, yeah, once Lisa actually is forced into a situation where she has to prove herself, like, like, like she has to prove to her, herself how strong she is emotionally, and then you're like, oh, this is fine. Bless her. Yeah, and so it also makes sense from Rose's perspective too because she also hasn't ever forced Lisa into a situation where Lisa has to actually really be super best friend material, you know? Hmm. Hi, Maggie. Yeah. Uh, glad you're caught up. Nice. Um, oh no, he's caught. He's caught oh. up to. He's caught up to where he came in. Oh, okay, sorry. So he's still he's still twelve minutes behind. JK, I apologize. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, and. We find out later the reason why Lisa was getting so gussied up because Rose accidentally gets sucked into her head is Christian and Lisa are about to do fuck. Isn't there stuff before that where, like, we meet Tasha? No, I think that happens after they do fuck. No, because we meet Tasha, because I have notes about this because I started actually chronolo chronicling it, and it's like, because I have, why am I jealous of Tasha and Rose isn't? I was like, why isn't she being a jealous bitch? Because she doesn't understand yet. Yeah, mum has I'm to like, tell her. Because I'm like, I'm being a jealous bitch. Because um, <laughs> Rose is just like, I like her. And I'm like, I hate her. I do like her, but I hate her. Um, and then... I mom, hate her, but that's for last book reasons. Yeah. And then because Rose like sets them up, mom has to train us in the morning. And then we give a we get a black eye. So. Yep, that happens. Then there's also the um, contrast to last book where like last book, every time she was in the hospital, Dimitri was there and now he's not. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, so the, yeah, no, Rose did have the black eye when they do fall. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't get mentioned that Dimitri's not there, but I noticed it. Um, Wait, what was that again? Sorry. Every Where time she's in Every time she's in the hospital, last mm. book, Dimitri's mm -hmm. there. Whereas yeah. in this book, he's not. I think he was sleeping. He was, but I don't think that would have stopped it in the last book. I don't think anyone told him, though, because he was yeah, sleeping. Yeah, I know. It's just something I noticed. Yeah. Um... um Okay, well, we'll go to that then. Um, oh, that's right. Um, Rose and that's right. Rose and her mum have her uh, have their argument, and Rose is, and she's like, "You fucked up." And mum's like, "No, I didn't." And she's like, "Oh well, whatever gets you the mom near marks, you know, like indicating that she thinks her mum just does the struggle of killing for the glory." Yeah. Um, and that's when Dimitri comes in, and he bad Rose. I'm going to show you a different kind of mark, and then yeah, they go. They go out to a cabin out in the grounds. Lissa and Christian are ice skating and Christian's aunt who raised him after mm -hmm. his parents um, turned Strigoi was there as well and she's got a big scar scar down her face. Um, yeah, she's, she's her and Dimitri know each other. They're very friendly. Um, Rose does get jealous of the fact that Dimitri will laugh and joke with her. Um, and then Tasha, Tasha knows she's been teaching Christian offensive magic. Plus she also does martial arts. Um, and she wants to go shopping and Demetrius like, I'll go with you. And she's like, no, 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 you, you go sleep. And Rose is like, no, he'll go with you. He doesn't mind. <laughs> and, and I was, was like, like you're fucking idiot, Rose. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what are you doing? Um, so, yeah, so after the black eye thing, she goes to see Lissa. And oh, Lissa yeah, we, like, we didn't actually talk about the black eye thing. We just gets mentioned a, that it happened. Her mom's training her. She met, She's mouthing off to her mom, accuses her mom of only fucking her dad. For he, she, Like, she picks the best specimen to breed with. <laughs> and, yeah. And her mom punched her in the face. Yep. Her mom feels bad about it, but she feels really bad. But but, but also, that's what 
but that's what happened. I mean, yeah. and also granted, Rose is an abandoned child who doesn't actually know the story. So. I mean, to be fair, that's kind of her mother's fault that Rose doesn't know about. That's my point. So you're kind of like, like, you're like, you brought it on yourself, mom. Yeah. But um, mom also, like, I understand why mom punched her, but I also understand why Rose doesn't like mom. Oh, I and I also because you know you because also Rose, in the context they're fighting as well, so it's yeah, easy like when you're you already hyped up. Yeah, and you also get Rose's personality, and you're like, of course she's gonna poke the bear because she genuinely wants answers too. And I'm like, in that moment when she's really amped up, that's like at that point you know that that's Rose's only real way of communicating her emotions. Yeah, because she doesn't right now have the vocabulary to just be like. I am hurt and I would and I would wish you to answer my questions, please. Yeah. So instead of doing that, she's just a bitch. <laughs> she's uh, also going a little bit crazy. She just doesn't know it yet. Yeah. So uh I said Lissa is like, oh, that sad. Also fuck Mason. Oh, tells her to fuck Mason. Okay, yeah. Liz is like, you should do a fuck with Mason. And Rose is like, yeah, okay. Because I can't do fuck with Dimitri, so. Might as well try Mason. Yeah. I'm like. Um, um, so, yeah, so that's when Liz is going off to go meet Christian. I can't, what, I can't remember what Rose is doing in the meantime. I think she goes back to her room to pack. Yeah, because she's just like, I don't want to be seen with this black guy. Yep, so she goes back to her room her room to pack and then bam, she's in Lissa's body. Christian's making out with her. Rose is like WTF and then she clicks onto what's about to happen. And she's like, no, 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 I'm a virgin. I don't need to be, like, even if I wasn't, I don't need to see this, but I'm a virgin. I'm not going through this. My first time is not going to be in Lissa's body. Yeah. Yeah, poor thing. Um, she, she, she gets out literally just as he's about to penetrate, so bless. Yep. <laughs> She saved herself. So we almost have sex with Christian and then hi, Mason, uh, the next morning with Dimitri. So before that, it's like we run into Mason and she's pretty much yeah. like determined to like relationship with Mason at this point. And she's like, yeah, so she's like, come Christmas with us. Yep. Um, he's like, I, I don't get to see mommy, so... All Christmas with you. Yeah. And then, so then we have like a Dimitri practice and we also just have like a mental breakdown of her mom. Yeah. Um, Cause Dimitri is like, she feels really bad and she's like, no, she doesn't. <laughs> yeah. And she also just doesn't want like Dimitri to see her face. And I really liked yeah, the breakdown. Sweet. Yeah. I liked yeah. the breakdown. It was like really realistic because um, also, yeah, like you said, we don't know why she's being so irrational, but even like, if you don't, even when you don't know why you're just like, yeah, she's, she's like super isolated right now because like, she's basically losing Dimitri. Her mom yeah. a whole mess of things and she's losing yeah. with her, and you're like just the, like, I get it, man. Like the, for, like the first time you read it as well, like you, you read it just as typical hormonal teenage angsty breakdown but, but like but like um not but like i mean that like kind of just makes it sound a bit more trivial but it's like you 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 empathize with the reason she's also breaking down yeah because it's it's more like you know all of the stuff that's yeah. stacked on top of everything yeah she's into over like one and then also because it's not just in most books, it would just be like, a boy problem, I'm upset. It's like mom, it's mostly like mom and Lissa stuff that triggers the breakdown. So you're not, hmm. so it's so it's not as trivial as it would be like in most YA books. Or yeah, most like she books hasn't for that seen, matter. Yeah, she hasn't seen her mother in like four, five years. She's, the most communication she's gotten from her mother in the years in between is like, yep. you know, like a two sentence email here or there. <clears throat> yep. So and then she almost had her first time in Lissa's body. So she's just like, I can't even get away from her even when she's happy. Um, yeah. I don't know who I am and I'm 
and I hate it. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that so, gets even worse next book. That feeling. Yeah. So like, so when she's freaking out, you're like, I get it. And you also, because of the way that her personality is set up, because of how impulsive she is, you also understand why she is a seventeen-year-old because she hasn't gone through this. She hasn't, you know, completed this character arc yet. You also understand why she doesn't have all of the necessary, all of the necessary vocabulary to completely express herself. So that's mm. another reason why it's not annoying. And so it's just all written in a ways that makes sense and in an order that makes sense. Yeah, like I'm 30 and I still really enjoy listening to this series. And yeah. it's YA, it's target audience is 17 year olds, but it's like my mom loves this series. It could, well, it's well written, you know, and mm. well written material is well written material. Uh, hey, Memes of Destruction, what's up? This is Book Club hey. with Bay. We were talking about books. It's not politics, but welcome. Um, it's just for fun. But we are discussing a good book. But yeah, it's YA. But like you said, it's it, because it's so complicated and because the order of setup and execution, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. And so you're, you really just, you're into it. And honestly, reading the series, I'm like writing stuff down like, ooh, make sure I do this, this, and this. Just like double check my shit, man. Um, yeah. And I like books like that, that make me as an author, like, double check myself because yeah yeah i like it uh, yeah and honestly like i i still just like i the, i don't think there's a single like vampire academy verse book where i don't cry at least once i cried at the breakdown i um yeah i had a bit of a cry there a few places in between and then i i i sobbed not when mason dies but when the fight's over and then Rose has her mental, like she just like goes borderline catatonic. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I can't help but break yeah. down. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to listen to, I'm going to listen to the rest of it today and take notes. And I know that like, yeah. Um, but the breakdown made me cry. And then also she then kisses Dimitri. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, why did I do that? I know that's going to like ruin what little of our relationship we have left. What the hell is wrong with me? And that made me cry. I was like, yeah. I was like, I've just been sobbing for 20 minutes. Um, and then this next part made me cry. I've been like emotional recently, but still, okay. Um, it's just really well written. Um, so then we do Christmas and Dimitri's not talking to us because yeah. Yeah, so um, Christmas is Christian, Lissa, Tasha, Dimitri, Rose, Mason, and surprise Janine visit halfway through. Janine is Rose's mother. I don't think we ever – we haven't actually said her name yet. Rose's yeah. mom's name is Janine. <clears throat> yep. And then mom oh, – Mom drops the Tasha bomb. That we yes. all saw coming, except for Rose. <laughs> yeah, so the mom and Dimitri thing both made me cry. I've been crying for an hour, thanks, um, is my note. And, uh, yeah, so she's like, by the way, this. And then yeah. Rose just shuts down and kicks them all out. Yeah, so, yeah, Janine's like, oh, well, you know, I think Dimitri and Tasha will be a good match. And Rose is like, WTF. And she's like, Tasha wants him to be her guardian plus she what she wants to bang him and she doesn't care about having like whether or not she has dampy children so like you know maybe they'll do like they'll have a relationship and have babies and rose is like but no that's not fair <laughs> bye mom yeah and yeah, yeah like there's so many times where cuz also cuz they just had. They also had just had like a really tender, like oh, the beginnings of a tender moment, um, as well. Um, Rose, like Janine, gives Rose a present and she opens it and it's a Nazar, um, which, if for those of you who don't know, it's like this blue eye shaped thing. It's very big in Turkish culture, which Rose's father is Turkish, um, and. Yeah, and it's in. I don't know if it's indicated in that conversation or if it's, it's mentioned not. later. Okay, it's later, later, but but it, 
we find out at some point in this book that Rose's father gave it to her mother. Yeah. And then the um, way that, oh, sorry. Uh, and then that's when the Dimitri bomb gets dropped and Rose just kicks mum out. And you can, as the reader, you can see that that kind of just, it, it, it must be hard for Janine because, again, she's trying, like, she knows she's fucked up. She's trying to get in there and Rose, like, every time there's, an op like, an opening, one of them does or says something wrong and Rose just shuts down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And which I get as well. You know, it's hard to let your mum in when she's never tried to get in in 17 years. Well, and then also, like, when she's she basically breaks your heart. Yeah. Hashtag rude. But, and the hard thing is because Janine hasn't been in Rose's life, really. She has no idea that what she's saying is breaking Rose's heart. Which right, just, and Rose is just like, I can't even tell her. Like, so goodbye. Um, <clears throat> you know, like, so she's just like, get out. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, it's, 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 really, it's really sad breaking their relationship until they start to mend it. Yeah. And then the way that the Dimitri Funk is handled is handled really, really well, especially for the pacing of the book, because she's just like, I'm in a funk. And then I was sort of not in a funk, but now I'm kind of in a funk. But now I'm kind of not in a funk because now we're kind of at like the ski lodge and I can avoid Dimitri. And now I'm like sort of distracted with this. And so yeet. Like, so yeah. you know, she's in a funk, but you're not like, it's not annoying. But yeah, it's, it's written in a way that you know that she's in a funk for like weeks. Yeah, so. and um, like, because her and Mason as well, they've always had an incredibly flirty relationship, and she knew that Mason had a bit of a thing for her. But then, like when they're on the plane to the ski lodge, you know, they're just having their usual flirty banter, you know, and the th what Lissa said about you know maybe giving Mason a fuck a go. Like, you know, that's in the back of her head. And then, um, like, the, there's innuendo and stuff. And then Rose clicks, oh, wow, no, he actually really likes me. And fuck, he looks good right now. Okay. Like, you know. Yeah. Like, it, it, it progresses into the beginnings of a relationship naturally. Yeah. It also acknowledges kind of, like, the complicated, especially in Rose's situation, the complicated. Yeah. Um, dynamic of yeah she can be at least physically attracted to Mason it's some you know who's somebody that she was physically attracted to at the very least before she even met Dimitri so she's like yeah I can probably ease into something familiar I think yeah um, at least I can try to move on because I have yeah. to and especially like in like taking into account Dimitri and the fact that Lisa has a boyfriend and all that stuff. You can also see why Rose also is just desperate to cling on to someone who just wants wants her no complications. Yeah, she even says it. And that's what Mason is. Yeah. So then um, after that, skiing. yeah, we go through the skiing thing and like her and Mason get really competitive and then Mason ends up spraining his ankle, I think. Yeah. Um, but then and he's fine. Yeah. Just... But then he can ski the next day. Only the baby slopes though. <clears throat> yeah. But then before that, I think we run into Adrian. Oh yeah. I think, I think that's in between the two ski. Things. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, um, um, yeah, we meet Adrian, who's like one of my favorite. I love characters him. of all time. I love Adrian. She's Too bad great. he's married now. <laughs> he gets he's married. Fantastic. Oh, he's amazing. So, um, um so and he's supposed to be kind of like, yeah, intro introduce love square. But it's, it's introduced square. <laughs> yeah, but it's introduced in a way that like. <laughs> makes sense because she's not immediately like, oh, I like him. She's just kind of like, he's weird. He's a flea and he won't, it's, it's like, I'm a bitch. He's a flea. He's clinging to me. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And she's not like into it. She's just like, no. 
Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, so he, he he's a little bit drunk. He's smoking and she's like, you're drunk and you stink like an ashtray. And he's like, well, you, you smell like sweat and your sweat is amazing. Yeah, and she's <laughs> like, that's weird. And I don't appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so Zoe would have been like, I need to start sweating more often. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, and the, that's the thing with Adrian as well. Like, you know, with how he is with people and everything as well, like Rose actually doesn't take the fact that Adrian's into her. And I don't think he's into her yet. He's just kind of fascinated by her. Yeah. And we find out why later. But, um, and then even when he actually is genuinely interested in her, she doesn't take it seriously until, you know, like I think the end of the next book, she doesn't really fully take it seriously. Well, yeah, because you as a normal person, like, okay, in any other book, right, a mysterious guy is at all interested in you, you're automatically in love, right? But any normal person would be like this guy is clearly playing with every human being that he shows interest in. And I'm already having my heart broken goodbye. Um, yeah, so. and, and part of what adds to that as well is Adrian's a really big flirt in general. Exactly. So like, that's why she runs in the other direction. And you're like, yeah, you totally should run in the other direction. And then she does. And she's like, I'm not taking this seriously. Cause no normal person would. Yeah. Yeah. And so it makes sense. Whereas like in every other book, it'd be like, this is going to be a hardcore love triangle because he's in love with us and only us. And mm -hmm. Yeah. And even, and then even when she does take him seriously, she still doesn't actually really take him that seriously. Yeah. Or Adrian. Well, he's a massive flirt. I know. But when you're he's smart, crazy, you it's not his fault. Well, when you're smart, you don't take those people seriously. I know, but he should be taken seriously because someone else ends up taking him seriously and they get married. Yeah, and, uh, you know, God bless the people who have the balls to do that. All the overheads of steel. Yeah. How dare you. <laughs> Whatever. Because uh, those people are not me. I take pages out of the Rose Handbook of Life. And I'm like, nope, goodbye. Oh, I'm Team Sydney. Fuck you. No, I am too. I'm like, good for you because that is a uh, that is a ballsy move, and I admire it. I really do. Yeah, and one one thing I one thing I really do like is um like with Rose and Dimitri, right? Like they're their relationship, then, like by the end, it's just like you know, we're cr we're the crime fighting duo type thing, you know, like they're that couple. Whereas Sydney and Adrian end up like, we're the we're the couple that has a catchphrase. Do you want to know what their catchphrase is? What is it? The center will hold. That's adorable. Because um, I'm Adrian was, it. yeah, Adrian was reading a poem, and I think it's something about war or something. And it's just like the center cannot hold. And then, yeah, in and when he's having a breakdown, she's like, no, the center will hold. Do you want to know why? Because we're the center. And so that becomes their thing. The center will hold and it's really sweet. <laughs> but, yeah, that's yeah. the thing with Adrian because we find out at the end, like in this book as well, Adrian is also a spirit user and he... Lisa goes on antidepressants, it cuts her off from the magic completely. Adrian self-medicates with alcohol, cigarettes, whatever. And when he's drinking, it cuts him off from the magic. As soon as he sobers up, he's got his magic again type thing. And everyone just, no one expects anything of Adrian. Like, I mean, that's not too much in this book. Like, because at the moment, everyone's just like, oh, that's Adrian of Oshkov. He's got a bad rap. We find out why, because again, alcoholic because spirit mm -hmm. but um but yeah throughout the rest of the series everyone's just like oh well that's adrian and it's like that's not fair poor adrian yeah um i love him <laughs> i do too he's, he's a good, good boy um and then i think adrian visits us in our sleep 
yes, he visits Rose in her sleep and she's like, but this is like, and she's just like, and he, he says something and she's like, but this is my dream. Go away. And he's like, is it now? And then it ends. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's also like, you have a lot of shadow. And she's like, I was shadow kissed. And he's like, what does that mean? And she's like, I died. And then I was not died. And he's like, whoa, goodbye. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then uh, Lissa is waking us up. And she's like, there was another attack. Yes. And then we find out that Maya's mom died. And if it was Zoe, Zoe would have been like the hag from hell. Her mom's dead. Yay. Yeah. Or like, oh my god, that is so sad. Her mum's dead, but she's still a bitch. Whereas Rose is like, I actually really feel bad for her. I'm really surprised, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, you know, and then she also says, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. And Maya's my worst enemy. And then she's like, you know what? No, she's not. That's ridiculous. And I'm like, <laughs> I like it. It's good. It's good writing. It's really good. Yeah. And... And like her relationship with, um, do we start calling her Maya again? It's yeah. Mia. And that's one thing that oh. really annoyed me. The first time her name gets mentioned in this book, the first time her name is mentioned, I think it's in like the prologue bit, like the it is previously. Mia. Yeah. In the previously in Vampire Academy section, it's pronounced Mia. The rest of the book, it's Maya. I like was like, who is Maya? But then I was like, I do remember, but I remember it a little differently. That's because her name's Mia. Yeah. Sorry. Mia. Yeah, I'm it's, listening it's to spelled it. M I A. It's Mia. <sighs> anyway, um, and then she's like going around and then you know, she's going on about her business and she's like, Okay, let's like go sit in on like the meeting and then her mom's like, What are you doing here? And she's like I had a question because she was also like, do I ask Dimitri or my mom? Just, eh. But she winds up going to her mom and then Dimitri's there anyway. But yeah, she does go to her mom and I was like, I like it. I, yeah. I stand. <laughs> Don't, that, that's a hell of a thing. Shut up. <laughs> we're, not, <laughs> we're not tainting this with that. Like we can't have... That's we okay. can't, they can't they can't have mutual catchphrases okay <laughs> <laughs> um but i was I, I i was into it i thought that was a good decision <laughs> yeah um and yeah we learned like with the second attack a lot more people died which indicates many more strigoi um more human involvement and they're like wow this happened this has happened twice in like a matter of a week type thing oh shit this is not good. And so because there's so uh, so many um, royals at the ski lodge at that point in time type thing, they decided to have, like, I guess a town hall, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. That's effectively yeah. what these are. Like, whenever they have, like, you know, oh, there's the whole, like, there's the meeting at the thing today. It's, like, it's a town hall. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah. Um. So they go there. Lisa is, like, and Lissa starts to act princessy. Mm -hmm. She's like, no, I need to go and sit up the front and represent my family. And they're like, but you don't have a family. And she's like, exactly, which is why I have to go up. Um, yeah, she's like, I am my family, but like, I'm still a royal family, so fuck off. And they're like, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Um, and they're more or less, tr like, it's more or less like, yeah, all the, Royals arguing about how to best protect themselves. Some are saying we all need to live in like enclaves. Um, no one should be allowed to live outside of enclaves. And people are like that's fucking retarded. We need to we need to get as soon as they're walking, let's put a stake in. Like the, as soon as dampiers are walking, let's put a stake in their hand. And while yeah. we're at it, anyone any dampier who doesn't want to be um, a guardian too bad so sad you're gonna be a guardian and then tasha's like this is all retarded how about we just learn to defend ourselves we have magic we have the ability to punch something Let's yeah just... and everyone's like <gasps> i know shock horror because <laughs> that's the craziest they're thing like, they've ever heard yeah they're like excuse you yeah, they're Use like, our magic you? offensively. You want us all to become Strigoi. How dare you? How absolutely dare you? Isn't it like you can only become a Strigoi, though, if you drain 
blood. Or if it's your god Tanji. Yeah, so like, does that even make sense? Uh, the, they're all sus on her because her brother, you know, turned Strigoi. Right, but she's like, so I don't want to be vulnerable to them. But they're, yeah, and it's like, yeah, I no, get it. Ultimately, they're just like, you want us to get our hands dirty? And to quote Adrian in later books, these hands don't do mad, manual labor. That's yeah. the opinion of pretty much all of these, uh, like the majority of royals, that's their Mm-hmm. That's their perspective. These hands don't do yeah. manual as well. Yeah. Um, and then she sets a cardigan on fire and the meeting devolves into madness. Um, Adrian invites Rose to a hot tub party and Rose invites everyone else, including Mia, because Mia is standing there. Mm-hmm. Um and so they go. Yep. Um, and Rose accidentally gets drunk and almost eats goose liver. Yeah, this is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then her and Adrian have another moment and she, no, it's not, it, that doesn't happen yet. Um, yeah, her and Adrian have another moment um, and Lissa gets involved in that moment as well by accident and then there's something that happens between them and we're like, what the fuck, I don't know, and Rose is like, I don't know what the fuck's happening but this is weird and then I think that, I think they leave. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, Mia starts asking about offensive magic and they're just like, offensive magic? I don't know. Like, Yeah. You know? They're like, we would never... And she's yeah. like, yeah. And, and they're like, Mm-mm. yeah. Then next day, Rose wakes up. Lissa's not there, but a box of perfume is. She takes one and takes the rest back to Adrian. Yeah. Because they're from Adrian. Lissa's in his room. She's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And Lissa's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And Demetri's like, what the fuck are you both doing here? Because he was walking past. Um, he almost knocks Adrian out. Adrian talks him out of it. They leave. Then Christian and Lissa have a fight because she was in Adrian's room. So Rose goes to a party with Lissa instead. She dresses in a very skin tight clothes, like skin tight dress. Her mom yells at her. Um, her and Dimitri have a deep and meaningful conversation. Um, And then she goes and makes out with Mason. You're muted. Um, Sorry, dog was barking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, she makes out with Mason. Realizes she's pretend, like imagining she's making out with Dimitri. She's like, "This is fucked up. Let's just take a step back. I'll talk to you later." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's right, because her and Demetri ended up having a chat as well, and he was like, "Oh, it looks like the Strigoya in Spokane," and she had told mason that um, yeah this is i think this is where i am not or yeah i might, you, have, I might you, have fallen asleep yeah you you're kind of yeah the bit that you played was when Demetri and rose were having their dnm okay because i was like i um, don't remember this <laughs> yeah so um so yeah he had yeah, so Rose, um, Demetri and Rose, and you know, like they're they're talking. He's like, "Look, if you like, as, so long as you act like an adult, I'm going to treat you like an adult." This is the situation that, like, this is the info we have on the Strigoi. We think they're in Spokane. This and that, and then Tasha mm-hmm. comes along and like tries to flirt with Dimitri. Rose acts childish again, and Dimitri's like, "Bitch, please, you just ruined ev- all the progress we just made." And Rose's like, "I know, I'm gonna go make out with Mason now, okay?" Yeah, which um, is just yeah. I assume that like further yeah. does that further fuck things up? No, it doesn't. Um, although then her and Mason, she tells Mason what Dimitri told her about the Strigoi. Yeah. Um, and then they make out, and then she yeah realizes, and she's like, "I need to back up off this. This is 
this is not healthy. Um, I'm going to go sort some shit out. I can't remember what she does while she sorts shit out, but then she realizes, no, I have to go and end things with Mason. Yeah. She goes to his room. He's not there. His roommate said he was packing a bag. She asks around. She works out that Mason, Eddie, and Mia went to Spokane. And she's like, well, fuck. So she's like, I need a Moreau to compel guardians to let me go and follow, mm -hmm. like to let me off off the ski lodge ground so I can go and get them before they get into shit. Yeah. Um, so she gets Christian. Um, and so they follow them. Um, but they had already caught their bus, so then Christian, Christian and Rose catch a bus and they know where they're looking because they were looking for a shopping mall in Spokane. Yeah. So they find the right shopping mall, find them there, and they're like, there were no struggle here. This was, you know, like they're all dejected and they're like, but we did find the tunnels and Christian's like, let's check out the tunnels. That sounds fun. Yeah. So then they go check out the tunnels. Rose sees um, a list of how many royal families are there, 12? I think so. I think it's 12 or 13. Yeah, it's one of those two numbers. However many it is, I, um, yeah, however many it is, Rose sees a list of letters and, like, mm -hmm. crosses next to two of them. Yeah. And then she works out that it's a list of all of the royal families listed from smallest to largest and the two crosses yeah. um, with the two families that were attacked. Mm -hmm. Um. And then so she's like catches on and she's like, nope, the intel was good. There are Strigoi here. We need it. So she's like, okay, guys, let's go. Let's go back to the bus station now and get back to the ski lodge before anyone realizes we're missing. It's like you traveled to another state. I think they know by now you're missing. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, they're, they're on their way back. But on the way back, um, there's a van pulls mm -hmm. up beside them. To like, uh, if some humans jump out, and so like you know, the dampiers get into protective mode over Mia and Christian. Yeah. But then a gun gets pulled, and they freeze, and they get kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Um. They end up in a basement, and there's a Strogoi guy, and all he needed was a moustache to twirl. Yeah. Um. While he gave his villain speech, and ultimately he knew Christian. <laughs> He, uh, it turns out he knew Christian's parents um, yeah. before, like after they became Shigori, before they deaded. Um, and he's just like, look, this is how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. You two, Maroi, um, one of you gets to live forever. The rest of you are going to die. But you know how we're going to decide this? We're just going to starve you all. And the first Maroi to drain a dampier is the one that's going to live forever. Yep. Done. Um, in the, so, yeah, they're effectively just tied up in a basement. Um, a, Rose falls asleep briefly and Adrian tries to work out where she where she is, but she's just like, what are you talking about? You know, get out of my dream. And he's like, no, Rose, like this is actually a for real conversation. Where the mm -hmm. fuck are you? Yeah. And she's like, we're, and then she's starting to be like, we're in a basement. And he's like, where is the basement? She's like in a house because, like, she's delirious. Right. Um, and But then she gets pulled out of the dream. Like, she gets woken up before she can actually say we're in Spokane. Um, and, yeah, so then it's just a matter of, like, yeah, we get a lot of, like, you know, evil guy coming down. He's like, is anyone going to drink yet? And every time he comes down as well, he drinks from Eddie. Mm -hmm. um, so Eddie's just high as a kite. Yeah. Um, Christian and me are getting, you know, hungrier and hungrier. And then Rosie's just like, oh, wait, magic. Magic. Christian can get us out of this. But how do I tell Christian you can get us out of this? Um, so she comes up with a clever ploy of, like, you know, indicating her hands and then yelling at the guards but emphasising the word fire. And Christian's like, okay, I'm ready to drink now. And they'll... And everyone's just horrified, including Rose, because she's like, did Christian fuck up what I was trying to tell him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he comes over, pretends to drink from 
Rose while burning the, her plastic wrist cuff things and apparently that ends up being her worst injury out of this whole thing, like the burns mm -hmm. he left on her wrist. But, yeah, she breaks free, you know, kicks the asses up. I think her, the two guards were human anyway. Um, yeah, she, mm -hmm. she, she breaks free, does that, crush and freeze the others. You know, Mason takes care of the straggler and then they're like, okay, we need to get out of here. So they're like, let's go upstairs and they go upstairs and like, looks clear, let's just go. And the story girl like, mwahaha, we've been here the whole time. Um, she... She distracts them long enough for Mason to get Eddie, Mia, and Christian out. They're yeah. fighting. Um, it's like the leader, Strigoi, and his lackey who was just like, but I'm hungry. Let me just eat one of them, okay, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Fight, evil speeches, fight, fight, fight. M Mason comes back in. Um, and he's like charges that leader dude and he's just like, nope, neck snap tosses Mason aside to the chicken. He's like, maybe that'll shut you up while I take care of this. Mm -hmm. um, Rose goes into rage mode and, like, I th she throws uh, – I can't remember how she kills the chick. I think she throws her in the fire or something and then yeah. hacks the other guy's head with a, with a dull sword. Um, but she's about to die, but then Wild Mia appears and uses fish tank water to drown him to distract him long enough for Rose to hack. Ouch. Um, yeah, but then once he's dead, Rose runs over to Mason's body. Mia's like, Rose, we've got to go in case more come. Yeah. And Rose, like, threatens to stab Mia if she takes one step closer type thing, and she just goes into protect, protect Mason mode. Mm -hmm. This is where I had my mini breakdown because, yeah, she's just adamant, I have to protect him, I have to protect him. Yeah. And, yeah, it's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, probably Christian um, manages to get a call to them to say, "Hey, this is where we are," type thing. And eventually, we don't know how much time passes. Most likely, a few hours, type thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then the guardians come, and Rose just goes back into feral, feral mode and like stay away. And then Dimitri is there and he breaks her out of it and she has a bit of a breakdown. Um, and then they get on the plane um, and Mia comes over to talk to her and Rose is just like, I, would, I want my mummy. Yeah. And Mia's like, she's here. And she's, Rose is like, what do you mean she's here? And she's like, what, you didn't see her? And then Mia just gets up and walks off and then mummy comes over and Rose has a bit of a breakdown. Yeah. Um, so that so this is where their relationship actually starts to mend because Rose finally lets herself be mm -hmm. vulnerable um, with her mother. Yeah. And Rose finally understands because earlier in the book as well, her mum yells at her saying like, like after, at the party, um, she's like, look, you need to be careful of your reputation because someone's going to, tr eventually someone's going to maybe take advantage and you're going to end up a young mother with a kid that you don't have the life experience to even know what to do with and you're not going to be able to be the mother you want to be. Yeah. And Rose finally clicks that, yes, no, her mum was talking about herself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, so, yeah, they get back. Mason gets buried. Rose gets two more marks. And we find out that Lissa is considering going off of her medication and um, Adrian is a spirit user and they want to work, like they want to work together to find out spirit. Yeah. And that's, oh, and Dimitri's like, I, I, I declined Tasha's offer. Yeah. And that's the book. But it's really sad. Like, again, like, honestly, yeah, her going into, like, feral lioness mode over Mason's body is... <laughs> it's it, sad. It, it, it's heartbreaking because, like, you can also say, like, she's in shock, she's in denial, she can't process, she can't cope, so she just goes into base instinct mode. Yeah, and she's just like, give me a minute. And you're like, ooh. And and then yeah, it's really sweet as well when she's just like, I want my mommy type thing. Like she doesn't actually say the words 
I want my mommy. I think right, it's like, I but you're like, me. I want my mom too, man. <laughs> like, and you yeah, feel and, it. And it's really nice to actually see that moment. Yeah, well, because, like, she kind of did the same thing, too, like, with the Dimitri thing, like I was saying, when she chooses to go to, Dim like, go to her mom instead of Dimitri, you know, she's like, yeah, who do I trust more right now? Instinctually, I think I want my mom. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't want to, like, I don't, I don't, I don't trust this person, so mom, and yeah, and and, yeah, and, you, and you feel that, you just, you feel the whole thing. Yeah, and her mom does end up becoming a very important person, like, to her and not yeah. just, you know, like, yeah, they they do end up getting, I mean, like, you know, they're always going to have their issues and they're always going to have a thing, but she's not just like, oh, my God, it's my mom. She's like, oh, hi, mom, type relationship. Yeah. And it's nice. And I love her yeah. when, I, lo I can't wait till we, I can't wait till her dad's in, in the series. Can't wait till daddy comes. I don't remember her dad at all. You don't? No. Oh, her dad's amazing. But yeah, she she even gets really grossed out because like when she graduates, right? Um, like when she yeah, when she graduates the academy, like her dad's there and her mom's there and her dad's flirting with her mom. Well, her dad flirts with everyone, but also her mom. Yeah. Especially her mom. And she's just like, can you two please not give me a sibling? <laughs> <laughs> like this is gross okay guys <laughs> yeah and you know but um you know i her her, her dad is zme i'm excited yeah i i i enjoy um because also her dad her dad has cameos and bloodlines as well and I, I, that's one thing i love like Again, when like they extend it and you just got like these brief cameos of characters and it's just like you remember. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun. And yeah. that that is one thing as well, like uh, Rochelle Mead doesn't treat treat the reader like an idiot. Yeah. Like you meet like in, there's some there's a few characters, right, where they're only in like one book for like a scene. Mm hmm And then yeah you meet them like two books, like you see them again two books later and like at most they'll be like a little, like for example, Sonya, like when Sonya Carp comes back into the series type thing, um, they're like, Son Sonya Carp, my old crazy teacher, and she just leaves it at that. And it's like, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I didn't need the rundown. Yeah. Like, like I said, um, as much as, you know, I love what's her face? Fucking Patricia um, Bruce. Yeah, she just every character. This is Warren. He's gay. Yeah, it's and this just, is this is his boyfriend Kyle, who is also gay. And it's like you I just, didn't catch that from the boyfriend bit. Yeah, you just get like these massive rundowns, and you're like, I get it. I got it. It's okay. Yeah, no, I like I I do like I do see the need for you know, the reminders again, because especially like when like some Mercy Thompson books are published like two years apart type thing. Yeah. Like I get the need for that, but then you're also like you you definitely are right in terms of like, for example, with this book, it's a previously on Vampire Academy and then it's yeah. just, and then we're all caught up. Let's just do the story now. Well, and having read a couple books where they do it both ways, I so prefer the previously on blah, 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 because you could skip it. Yeah. And normally I don't, honestly, because I'm like, I don't mind the recap when it's just, here's the shit that happened. Yeah, because usually at most it's also about five minutes long. It's like, I can, I can listen to this for five minutes. Yeah, and normally like the recaps are helpful, but it's just like there's, as an author, as well, there's no good way to do it. As a reader yeah. and an author, it, it's just, it's never natural. It, it's in the most natural way to do it, whether it's in character or out of character. Uh, the best way to do it is just at the beginning. Yeah, and obviously in character, what like in character makes sense, especially if the book's a first person book. Yeah, because um, um, like the 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 protagonist is already speaking to you the whole book, so why not just be like, "Hello, person." Yeah, <laughs> here's every 
this is me. This, these are my friends. This is the story. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually, that was one thing as well. Like, that was one thing with this one. She didn't do the – she didn't talk about herself until, like, the end of the recap. It was just like, this is the world and this is my best friend and this is blah. Oh, wait, who am I? Okay, fair question. I get it. <laughs> I'm almost – like, now I'm like, yeah, this is, like, talking – me into doing it for elder as well and i'm like crap <laughs> Might be worth um, it. i almost want to i mean i mean also like that type of thing like that is also handy like for like when we do do um book club because we do alternate series like each week yeah it is so like so it's like okay now Okay, right series. Okay, good. I know what's happening now. <laughs> you know, I might do it and I might just let the beta readers have it. And then, like, if they're into it with, like, the prologue and stuff, keep it. That's what beta readers are for. Uh, yeah, and, and again, like, that's the thing as well. Like, if, if the person's not, like, if someone doesn't want to read the recap, that's cool. Like, as long as it's a separate, like, it's a separate thing, they can just yeah. skip it. Yeah. So. Especially since, like, I don't hold your hand either. Yeah. Which is nice. I, I like it when authors don't, like, they, they trust me enough to get it. Well, I expect you to have read the first book in the series. Um, well, of the that's beginning. generally that's generally how series go. Like, you generally yeah. read them in order. Well, and I also write them with the general idea that you're going to, well, with the fact that at some point in time, all three of them are going to be out and yeah. Or like a lot of readers, like a lot of avid readers, right. Well, especially if it has been a long break, they'll reread. Yeah. The earlier books slash books before the new one. Yeah. Like elder is going to be two years between books. Yeah. So, so you'll probably find a good chunk of your readers will be like, it's been a couple of years. I yeah. Should, I should re-familiarize myself. But next week we are doing two books, right? Yes. We are doing, doing Dragon's Oath. Yeah. And which is a House of Night novella. It's the first mm -hmm. of the novellas. And then I can't remember the name of the ninth book, but we're yeah. also doing the ninth book. Uh, Destined. And we are going to go ahead, I think, and swap over to the Teresa J. Martin channel. Um so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I... Because fuck it. That's up to you whenever we do that. Doesn't yeah. change. I, I click a link to come like, here. Why not? <laughs> so, <laughs> I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, so I will, like, slowly just start uploading um, the book clubs. But... Because uh, also... What I'll be able to do on that channel as well is like, <laughs> is she okay? Oh, I don't know. Oh, the blanket fell off and she slid down with it. Give me a second. I'm just yeah. going to turn my camera off because I have to like, that. I don't want to just show my ass to everyone. So give me a sec. You're good. Oh my God. Um, Cause uh, what I'll also be able to do on that channel is, uh, do a playlist by series which I think is a little more helpful than just book club yeah so she's okay okay good <laughs> poor thing she's a bit she's a bit upset she doesn't like it when she embarrasses herself in front of people neither do I to be fair <laughs> yeah kitty down I repeat kitty down yeah I agree she's okay she's okay um, but she's purring now <laughs> Yeah, so, and I think Addie's going to be with us for those two. Um, Which will be fun because she yeah. gets ranty. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah. So, the, yeah, they'll be on separate nights, those two. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you said that bit. Yeah, they will be on separate nights, um, days, whatever. But yeah. with oh, that. Yeah. Se separate streams. Separate, yeah, whatever. Uh, but with that, I don't think we have anything else. No, but, nope. no, but she's just. But she's five. okay. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, the blanket. The blanket. Like, I need it not to be funny because I feel like an ass. 
<laughs> no, it's funny. Oh, it's okay. He's headbutting my arm now. She's fine. Oh God. Um, but yeah, thank you guys uh, so much for for hopping on, and I will I, I will remind people with where the things and stuff are. But yeah. So with yeah. that, um, we will bye. see you guys <laughs> over there. And bye, guys. Bye. Oh. Okay, then.